Hello guys, this is a response video to one made by my fellow fencer, Martin from Schilwache Potsdam, in which he compares the Bolognese tradition and the single manuscript uh, 133, also known as the Tower Fact book, the Valpurgis uh, manuscript and so on. I think that uh, comparing fencing systems and different approaches to fighting in historical sources and even in modern times is a key component of understanding them better. Yes, it's good to focus on one system and one source, but to understand what makes it different and what makes it similar to others, it's a good idea to read a bit on other sources, on other types of systems. And that is absolutely a valuable approach. The issue I see with comparing the Bolognese tradition and 133 is that you're comparing an enormous body of work to a single manuscript. In the Bolognese tradition you have multiple masters, multiple texts, spanning uh, almost a century and uh, giving you different contexts of the use of the system with different weapons, different weapon combinations. You can see how they change through time, uh, even how the terminology changes from master to master. Also, you can put the Bolognese tradition into context by comparing it with a lot of period sources, uh, other fencing systems that existed at the same time, like uh, Meyer's later Kunst des Fechtens, or uh, like the Destreza Vulgar. 133 stands alone. It's the oldest fencing treatise in Europe, and we know very little about the context in which it was used. It focuses on one weapon, one weapon combination, Yes, it's a weapon combination that's also prevalent in the Bolognese tradition, but uh, in the Bolognese tradition you have the fundamentals with the single sword, and you have uh, sword and shield, sword and buckler, sword and dagger, and bow arms and so on. In 133 you have just sword and buckler. Now, on the philosophical part of the comparison, the philosophy of the fencing systems, Martin makes a good, valid comparison between his definition of 133 and his definition of the Bolognese tradition. I don't disagree with it. The main point for Martin is that uh, 133 is a system of guards and counterguards in which you use the counterguards to gain a specific advantage against those who fence in the wards in the common guards, and use that advantage to hit without being hit, which is a common trope in martial arts. In the Bolognese tradition you have guards, many of them actually resemble the guards and counter guards you see in 133, and uh, you use, for example, provocations to uh, elicit a certain response or reaction or action from the opponent, gain an advantage and hit without being hit. So, everything looks very similar, and it is. The issue with that comparison is that you can take those definitions and apply them to every fencing system on Earth. Take the German Kunst des Fechtens, for example, the Lichtenauer tradition. You have guards, you have cuts, and uh, you have actions from those guards, you have guards that counter certain cuts, and you have cuts that break certain guards and the goal is to find the counter action to the opponent's actions, gain an advantage, and hit without being hit. And you can take that uh, definition apply it to anything. You can apply it to uh, the uh, Spanish fencing, to Italian fencing. You can go outside of Europe, compare, compare it to uh, Kenjutsu in Japan, to Chinese sword systems and it will fit most of the time with small differences. So that's my issue with uh, using those definitions and saying, yeah, you know, they're very similar. Of course they are when you define it like that. Now, Martin also focuses on uh, some of the differences between 133 and the Bolognese tradition. And I think that uh, this again creates another confusion. So, he states that the main difference is that 133 focuses on works working from the bind and close place, what the Italians call gioco stretto, while in the Bolognese tradition you have a big focus on gioco largo. But if we think about things in comparison, 
The Bolognese tradition also has a lot of Giocostretto material. In fact, if you take the Giocostretto material from all the Bolognese sources, it's gonna be much bigger than the whole of 133. Personally, I think 133 doesn't have a special focus on uh, close measure, as much as uh, the fencing game that it depicts is more focused on close measure and uh, the few details we have on wider measure are either missing or they were not intended to be in this remnant of a system. So, uh, it doesn't make sense to compare that huge body that has both white and uh, close play with something that's very tiny and has a distillation of some plays into close play. It's a very disbalanced uh, comparison. I think the main difference in between 133 and the Bolognese tradition is in how modern Hima approaches them. In the beginning of his video, Martin says that uh, 133 is uh, very contested, that uh, a lot of people have very differing interpretations. And there is some truth to that. There are a lot of different ideas of how specific actions in 133 work. However, if you get those fencers, fencing teachers, uh, hemaists, uh, modern interpreters who do fencing with uh, in full gear, who do drilling in full gear, who test their interpretations under pressure, you will see that most of those people who do that and do 133 have very similar interpretations. The very weird interpretations and ideas that you see are usually from people who um, don't really fence that much at high intensity. They uh, invent some weird ideas to explain the um, strange art, the strange uh, words and descriptions in 133, and uh, they show and publish online those interpretations, but they never show how they would work under pressure. And that's because if you take most of them and try to use them under pressure, they crumble. On the other hand, most, maybe 99% of the people who do Bolognese fencing know that sparring is a key part of uh, learning martial arts. They test them under pressure in tournaments, in hard, heavy intensity sparring and drilling, and in this way Bolognese interpretations are just as similar as uh, 133 interpretations among people who actually fence. And that's it with a critique. I think Martin did an interesting video. Mm, I just needed to fix some things with it. I think it would be more useful uh, from a fencing perspective to compare specific technical examples from 133 and the Bolognese fencing because I think that's where you will gain the most in both helping you understand 133 and uh, helping you gain some idea of the Bolognese tradition and uh, where it came from uh, earlier when uh, in the 15th century and uh, uh, early on when they were using shorter, uh, wider arming swords and get you some appreciation of the, those differences. Bye bye.